Hi there and welcome to my AP Chemistry Solutions video here. My name is Jeremy Krug and I'm going to work through the complete solutions for these released items. These have just been released on the College Board website. So these are uh, released items from the 2021 AP Chemistry exam free response section from the May 7th administration. My name is Jeremy Krug, and if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, go ahead and do that because my entire AP Chemistry course is online. 100 videos covers pretty much the whole thing. So subscribe to take advantage of that and stay tuned because my new AP Chemistry self-study workbook, complete with problems, uh, complete lessons, will be coming out in late summer of 2021. So make sure that you're uh, subscribe so that you can get access to that if you're doing AP Chemistry in the future. Well, let's take a look at question one here. And we have methanoic acid with the formula HCOOH ionizes according to that equation. Part A says write the expression for the equilibrium constant Ka. So once again, Ka is equal to products over reactants raised to the power of the coefficients. So we're looking at H. 3O plus concentration times HCOO minus concentration all over HCOOH concentration. And don't forget we always omit water in the liquid form because liquids are not included in these equilibrium uh, e expressions. So if you got that, you can give yourself one point. And just for full disclosure, don't forget that these points that I'm giving out, that I'm assuming are just a preliminary. Uh, we don't have any actual key yet, and there is a possibility I might make a mistake on here. So uh, hopefully uh, my answers will be correct and they will agree with what the College Board says. Let's go on to Part B. Calculate the pH of a 0.25 molar solution of methanoic acid. So once again, we're going to have our equation here. And we're going to, probably the easiest way to solve this problem is set it up as an ice box. That's how I always work these in my online chemistry course that maybe you've seen before. So we have initial change equilibrium for the 0.25 molar. That is the initial concentration of methanoic acid. We will assume it's practically zero for those two right there. So the change is going to be a minus x and plus x and plus x. So your equilibrium concentrations are 0.25 minus x, x, and x. And so we're going to plug these values here into the equilibrium constant expression that you wrote up there in part A. So when you do that, you have Ka, which the problem up here tells us is 1.8 times 10 to the minus fourth equals x times x, which is x squared, all over 0.25 minus x. And this is a pretty small equilibrium constant, so it's pretty safe to say that we can ignore that minus x. And now we can cross multiply and solve for x. So I have x squared equals um, whatever that is. But when I took the square root of both sides, I got x equals 0.00 six, seven, one to three significant figures. And so that X, as we can see here in the ice box, is equal to the concentration of hydronium ion, which is the same as H plus. So that is our H plus. So to find the pH, we just take negative log of that number. So negative log of 0 0.00671. And when you do that, you find that pH equals, and I got an answer of 2.17. I would imagine that this would be a two-pointer question. They would give you one point for calculating the H plus concentration correctly, and then one point for calculating the pH correctly. So up to three points at this, at this point. Let's move on to part C. In the box below, complete the Lewis electron diagram, electron dot diagram for methanoic acid. Show all the bonding and non-bonding valence electrons. So I always like to start with the outside and work my way in. So hydrogen has one dot, so we'll have you know one dot for whoops, one dot for that hydrogen there, and this hydrogen will get one dot as well. So I'm going to put one dot for that one, and let me make that a little bit easier to see. The oxygen here is going to have six. It's in group 16, so six valence electrons. So there's one, two, three, four, five, and six. And then the carbon, 
we'll have four, one, two, three, four, and this oxygen gets a six right there. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. And of course the goal is for all the hydrogens to have two. Everything else needs to have eight, the octet rule. And the hydrogens are good, but this carbon right here only has six, as you can see. That oxygen has eight. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to move a couple of these from oxygen down here to the middle. So I'm going to bring those right down into here to make a double bond. And that is the correct electron dot diagram that you should have. It should look like this. So that's a total of 18 dots whenever you add it all up. It should be in there and you should have an octet. If you put lines in here, that would be perfectly acceptable as well instead of those uh, dot pairs. And so it would be okay if you had something that looked like, let's see if I could draw it here real quick. Looks something like this if I did everything correctly. So that is also our electron dot diagram for methanoic acid. So if you got that right, give yourself a point. Going on to part D, we have aqueous solution here. And this compound H uh, 2 NNH2 reacts with water according to that equation and it's a little bit cut off but it says a 50 milliliter sample of 0.25 molar of this base is combined with 50 milliliter sample of 0.25 molar methanoic acid. Now you might be wondering how do I know that this this thing right here is a base? Well two reasons. First of all it produces hydroxide right? That's a good sign. Also, it has a KB. If it has a KB, it's probably a base. So it says write the balance net ionic equation that, that, that occurs when this base is combined with methanoic acid. So we have the methanoic acid. That's aqueous. It's going to react with the base. So H2, NNH2, and that's aqueous. And don't forget, according to Bronsted and Lowry, a an acid is a proton donor, so it's going to lose that H, and then the base is the proton acceptor, so it's going to end up receiving the H. So we're going to have the base is going to uh, pick up an H, so I'm, going to, I'm just going to stick that H at the end, so we'll make it H2NNH3+, plus. and the uh, acid, the methanoic acid, is going to lose. So it's going to be HCOO negative, like this. And so if you wrote that or had the equivalent of that, then you can give yourself a point. Now, part two says, is the resulting solution acidic, base, basic, or neutral? And justify your answer. Well, it's interesting that, you know, this is a weak base. And we know that because it has a, has a KB, and it's a pretty small number. Now, the acid, the methanoic acid here, is a weak acid. And we know that because it had a Ka that we just worked with on a previous slide. Its Ka is, in case you don't remember that, it's 1.8 times 10 to the minus fourth. So we're mixing this weak acid with this weak base right here. And so the solution is going to be, I mean, it's not going to be very acidic or very basic, but it's not going to be neutral either. We have to decide which is stronger. Is it the acid or is it the base? Well, the Ka of the acid is larger than the Kb of the base. And since the Ka of that acid you know, is, has a larger magnitude then this number up here, the 1.3 times 10 to the minus 6, by a factor of like 100 or so, that means that the resulting solution, when everything is equimolar, like it is here, it's going to be slightly acidic. So that's why the answer is acidic, and there's a justification. You've got to compare the magnitudes of those Ka's. So uh, if you got that right, give yourself a point for that one. So let's go on to part E. We're going to have a catalyst added to a solution of methanoic acid, and the reaction rep is represented by that equation right there. Is this a redox reaction? 
When you look at that, I hope you realize that is a yes. That is a big yes. Because the H, this H hydrogen right here has a plus one charge. That's its oxidation number. And over here, hydrogen in its elemental form is going to be zero. So that tells me that hydrogen is reduced. It starts out at a plus one and it ends up at a zero. And if we look at the carbon, that's my other uh, suspect here for something that's going to be undergoing, I guess that would be oxidation. The carbon here, if I do the actual algebra on this, I find that the carbon has a plus two oxidation state. And over here, well, you know, I've got two oxygens at minus two apiece, so that's minus four. The carbon's got to be plus four. So guess what? That tells me that the carbon is oxidized. And so it's oxidized from a plus two to a plus four. So that tells me that, yeah, this is definitely a redox reaction. So a point there if you have the correct answer and a good justification. Let's go on to part F. Gas law question here. We have that reaction. And uh, I don't have the equation here. I'm going to go ahead and rewrite that equation just so we can follow along with what's going on here because this is kind of important for the question. And we have an aqueous solution that's decomposing into two gases. And that's a balanced equation as it stands. It says this reaction occurs in a 4.3 liter vessel at 25 degrees Celsius. The total pressure is monitored on that graph. So it starts at zero. It ends up at 24 atmospheres. So our final pressure is 24 atmospheres on that graph right there. It says the vessel originally did not contain any gas. We can see that from the, the graph starting at zero. Calculate the number of moles of CO2 gas produced in the reaction. Well, we have all the ingredients in order to plug into PV equals NRT. So pressure is 24 atmospheres. The volume is 4.3 liters. We're trying to find the moles. R is 0.0821, and the temperature, 25 degrees Celsius, is 298 kelvins. So when you solve for N using algebra, the answer I got was about uh, 4.22 moles. Okay. Now, be very careful here, because this is not the answer. Okay. This is the total number of moles, because look at this. This is the total pressure, and the total pressure is a function of this stuff right here, plus the carbon dioxide. Now, it's, these were produced in a one-to-one -one ratio. So guess what? That means that the amount of carbon dioxide that we're trying to solve for here is exactly half of that number of moles. Half of it is hydrogen, half of it is carbon dioxide. So the number of moles of carbon dioxide is going to be 4.22 moles divided by 2 because it's, it's, they're produced in equal mole ratios there. So that's why the correct answer should be about 2.11 moles. So that is the answer. I would consider, I would guess this would be a two-pointer from the College Board. I would guess they would give you one point for the 4.22 moles, and I would imagine that they'd give you one other point for realizing that it was in a one-to-one a -one ratio, and the second point for that 2.11 mole. So interesting gas law question there. Uh, it's been a while since I've seen one like this, but this is, this is a good question, a good uh, gas law, and a little stoichiometry thrown in there for good measure. Now, part G, after the reaction has proceeded for several minutes, does the amount of catalyst increase, decrease, or remain the same? Justify your answer. I had to think about this one for a second because, you know, in kinetics, we know that a catalyst actually does, it does participate in a reaction. It is involved in the reaction mechanism. And so, you know, it, it's going to be doing something throughout the course of the problem. However, I don't think they wanted this question to be that complicated necessarily. You know, although the catalyst is a part of that, re of that reaction mechanism and it is going to participate, it is not going to get used up throughout the course of a reaction. Catalysts are never consumed throughout the course of a reaction. And so that means at the beginning and at the end, you're going to have the same amount. And so I would expect the amount of catalyst in that, uh, in that vat or in that uh, uh, chamber to remain the same. And so 
that is what my answer would be expected to be. I'd say one point for that. So if you add these all up, that gives you 10 points for free response question number one on the 2021 AP Chemistry exam. I hope you enjoyed that. I apologize for uh, my bad handwriting and for uh, any quick work I did here. Uh, I know some of you are very excited to see how you did on this exam, and so I want to put those questions out there. Stay tuned. The rest of the questions are coming, uh, and the answers as well. So uh, have a great day, and thank you for uh, joining my channel. Hope you subscribe so we can learn some more chemistry, and let's, uh, let's pass that AP Chemistry exam.